Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com and this video is about the world of web component libraries. So if you've been following me, you know that I've created a whole bunch over the last couple of weeks because I learned how to do sort of native web components using just standard browser APIs and then just started kind of building libraries on top of them. Um, which you can find all the libraries I've created here, alexmercedcoder.com slash jslib, meaning JS JavaScript libraries. And actually this particular page was created using the Merced UI um, library, okay? Um, and there's a whole bunch of other ones. Some of these aren't web component libraries like Merced utils and better types. These are actually like a bunch of functions for like arrays and sets. But I'm gonna come back to this because these aren't the only web component libraries out there. The two other big players, the biggest player is LitElement. Okay, that's from Google. Originally, um, Google had Polymer was their first foray into creating a library built on web components. M from my understanding, it was a little verbose. So they eventually came out with LitElement, um, which is a class that extends from HTML element that allows you to create uh, web components. Okay. Um, and it uses like TypeScript and some other stuff, so you can see what's going on here. Uh, my issue, I, li I like decorators a lot. That's what these things are. Uh, basically, the, what they are is just essentially a function that wraps around something else. The problem is they're not actually in JavaScript. No browser supports decorators. So that means for anything that uses decorators, you're gonna have to set up a bundler and have Babel transcribing and or transpilation, uh, etc. Okay. Um, also, there are some verbose pieces. Basically, the way lit element works is that underneath lit element, there's also what's called lit HTML. Lit HTML is Google's uh, tagged template uh, thing. And basically it does some under the hood work to help build out your HTML templates that you do with template literals. And then you would just basically plop that in here. Okay, so you can see how it's using it right there. So you use a little HTML tag before the template literal. Okay, and it's just does some magic. And then here you have, you know, your component. Okay, and then it works just like an HTML tag. So that's that's the big one, lit element. That's that's Google's uh, entry into this space. Lit element, lit HTML, um, leveraging that API and tag template literals, etc. Then there's lightning components, which is from Salesforce. Lightning components. Okay, one moment. Okay, so that's lightning component framework right here. And this is very similar. I mean, basically what all these libraries do is they take the core HTML element class that's built into the browser and just add features to it. So that way you don't have to program like features like state and props and other things like that. Uh, again, because that'd be annoying to have to do that for every component you make. That's one of the nice things about React, things like state and props are just kind of available to you from the get-go. Um, I'm not really familiar with all the features of Lightning Components, but basically Lightning Components kind of does the same thing. But they also make uses of like decorators and things like that. So again, you'd have to use like a transpiler like Babel and whatnot. Um, so I created several different libraries with the goal that you don't have to. Okay, there's, so there's no use of decorators as much as I like them. Um, I don't use tag template literals. Um, you just use normal template literals, okay? And there's a bunch of different ways you can make components. Like again, this is actually the code for that library page. Um, okay, and then basically creating the components that I made are just simple as as basically this that was making the component. Um, basically, the what I do is I, I my, all my libraries generally build, work around what's called a builder function. Basically, it's a function that returns a template literal, it returns your little HTML template, and different tools that I make will you know sometimes they take state and then they take props sometimes you pass in whatever you want to pass in um you know you you find the tool that you want okay but see i i was just using sort of the oldest version of my library for this because i just wanted to but you see like these are all my components and i use i have a router built in um let's go over here so you can see it so like i have this router component that works like the way you would expect a router component to work. It's actually down here. And these link components that generate the links. So then I just click the link and then those components get plopped right there in the middle. Okay. But that's one of several libraries. So we have Merced UI. Merced UI, I think it's like around like 
third now is like 13 14 kilobytes so um not necessarily as much of a savings versus pre-act as it once was because it has a lot of cool stuff in it um some of my favorite it has form tool form tool is actually a class that binds itself to a form so you can just bind it to a form it'll automatically fish out all the values for you with just a few functions you can capture all the values you can um clear all the form elements you can um change all the form elements so it makes it really easy to work with forms and also has the router components that you just saw it has um, a variety of different uh, two has a couple different uh, extensions to uh, HTML element the primary one being Merced element so basically you'd build your components using the Merced element class which if you're just looking to make web components with like state and stuff and you're not looking for all these other bells and whistles like the form tools and all these other helper functions you could just do the Merced element class by itself which is like two or three kilobytes and chain element, which is another version. The, diff the, the big difference between Merced element, Merced element basically takes state and props like you would expect a component to do. And then the actual class has um, global and local state. So every component has state. Um, and just like React, you could you know update the state and it will update the component. And also actually has like a redux like reducer built in so you can use that as well globally and locally so you could actually have a local reducer um, and a few other little cool features while chain element the way chain element works is that instead of having like the way global state works in Merced element is that you actually have to register your individual components with a static function uh, that registers it with the global state and then going forward those components get re-rendered when the global state changes uh, chain element instead of having like a global state that automatically triggers re-render every component gets registered automatically and then there's a function to re-render all components when you want to and then otherwise they individually update when their state individual state changes the only benefit to that is now you have access to both states so you have the global you have access to the global state and the local state uh, which is just you know more places where you can store data both of them use, and I think I also pass the query URL, the URL query into these uh, components. So basically, not you don't just get state and props like you would uh, in a normal, the way we usually use like React components, but you also get the query URLs to work with, and you also get the global state to work with. Um, but this library only contains that one li that one thing. Simple simple components is just another function that makes it. It's a really simple function to create very basic components. That's what that is. All three of these things are included in the Merced UI library. So again, the Merced UI library is a bit bigger, but it has all these benefits to it. Merced utils and better types both have, are just basically like helper functions for arrays, strings, sets. Think of like Lodash. Okay, it does a lot of stuff that you see in Lodash. Uh, Merced utils actually adds the functions to the array prototype. So you would just use them like you use other array functions. But some people don't like that because they're afraid of collisions with other libraries. So better types actually creates a whole separate type called better array. And you can just pass your arrays into better array and you get access to all the array functions. Basic element is the most simple. This is actually, I think, less than one kilobyte. One kilobyte. It's the simplest abstraction over the HTML element. It basically literally just adds props and state, nothing else. So if you're just looking to make web components, basically have state and props built into them basic elements all you need less than one kilobyte and then component zoo has all the class extensions I have from the other ones plus some new ones um, like I have a styled wrapper extension where you can create components that act as basically wrappers around elements in your Dom to style them kind of like styled components in react so if you wanted something like that that's there um, the form tool that I mentioned earlier, I actually componentize, so you can use it as a web component in component zoo. Merced element, chain element is still in there, and basic element is still in there. Um, and I think there's one, yeah, and then it has a route, different, slightly different version of the router. So there, I don't, basically there's a router tag, but not a link tag. Instead, you just have to make a call to the function, but it gives you a little bit a little bit different flexibility i want to say more it's just different um but you have these libraries so 
available to you in the world of web, but they all are using the standard web component library. Okay, that's the beauty of it. So that's why their bundles are small. Like the biggest one is Merced UI clocking in like 14 kilobytes. Actually, let me just like confirm that. So let's go to Merced UI, and that file is this file right here. Actually, 12 kilobytes. 12 kilobytes, and you get all the bells and whistles. And at worst, if we take a look at the npm version, 14.7. The module version, 14.5. So we're never really touching 16 kilobytes here. And if we go to basic element uh, right over here, that's literally less than a kilobyte. Again, the npm version, neither of them touch a kilo, touch a kilobyte. Um, and then component zoo, where's component zoo at? Let's see where we're at in size. Seven. So still, you're still under 10 kilobytes, and this has all the classes in it. It just there's a lot you'll see in like Merced UI. There's all these old functions. They're there and they're still useful, but they're functions that allow you to have state uh mapping to the dom outside of components you're not necessarily creating html tags they're just more like functions that will map a template to a target dom element so you can just actually just slap divs and then just say hey this function is going to slap this template to that div kind of thing and those helper functions are cool they can be fun to use um but you know components are what people like people like the components so um get all that so at so again at the high end you have Merced UI at four at twelve to fourteen kilobytes, all the way at the low end at compo component zoo and basic element where you're again under seven with for component zoo one kilobyte for basic element. And uh, yeah, but hopefully this gives you an idea of like the different libraries that are out there to work with web components. And um, because you know the great thing about web components is that since one they're lightweight because you're not loading a huge framework on top of everything. Um, they have pretty unanimous uh, browser compatibility nowadays. And they give you that sort of, you know, React, Vue, Angular type workflow where you're using sort of HTML tags. You're encapsulating your components in that way, but in a standard web code way. So you don't have to worry, since you're using just a standard browser API and all of these are just abstractions over that standard browser API, you're less having to worry about like sort of future support for uh, Angular or for a library, okay? It's, you're just using the standard browser API. And plus you can actually just bring these components into an Angular React review project because they're just leveraging brow standard browser APIs without having to do too much configuration. Because as far as your view Angular or React code knows, it's just another HTML tag. So uh, my name is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com. Have a great day and enjoy. Mm -hmm.